Hey, welcome everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco, Moscone West at the Professional Business Women of California's conference. It's the 28th year they've been doing this conference, over 6,000 women, pretty wide range, about 5% guys uh, made the trip. And we're excited, it's about diversity and inclusion, and we wanted to come check it out and, and bring you some of the, uh, the thought leaders. So we're really excited to have our first guest. He's Greg Jones, he's the Chief Diversity Officer for United Airlines. Welcome, Greg. Good to be here, Jeff. Absolutely. So. Uh, You've been doing this diversity thing for a while. Took a look at your LinkedIn. You know, you've been in healthcare. You've been, or excuse me, insurance and financial services. Now with United, are we making progress on this on this front? We are making some progress, but given the time that I think we've been doing this in the country, I would say it's not enough yet. Right. And so there's still a ways to go. It's a journey. We say, we take two steps forward. Sometimes a step back. Sometimes a half a step back but we're moving forward. Right, and certainly a lot of positive momentum here, and we cover the Grace Hopper show, and you know a lot of the women in tech stuff. Yeah. But, but again, you're not only looking at sex or race, but things like uh, 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 veterans with disabilities, I saw you Absolutely. doing some effort, so Absolutely. really a broad brushstroke. Yeah, it is, and when you think about it, it makes sense because, especially in the corporate space, we're talking about how do you actually get the most out of all the people that you have working for you at every level. And if people are afraid to fully commit themselves to work, your, product, your productivity is just not what it could be or what it should be. Right. You know, I have a theory, I'm sorry, Jeff, no. that corporate America is probably operating at about 60% capacity because people can't fully pull the trigger on their skills and talents. So what inclusion is all about is getting the most out of all the folks that you have by creating an environment in which they're comfortable in. You no, know, we hear that time and time again, and there's a lot of studies about, you know, diversity of opinion leads to better outcomes. This Absolutely. is not the right thing to do. I mean, it is the right thing to do, but it's also a great business decision. Right. Do business leaders get that? Do they see that by having a, a different uh, set of opinions and, and all of us bring our own biases to decision making and processes that the outcomes are actually better? I think it's starting to happen more and more. I think, uh, if you think about the history of this work, diversity and inclusion, since the, the 60s or whatever, it's migrated from affirmative action and all that that meant and the emotion that that provoked to, wait a minute, you know, the country is changing, the world has gotten smaller, this is starting to really make sense from a business perspective. So we migrated from almost completely the right thing to do to wow, wait a minute, this is a business play. Right, so what are the things you see that are really concrete for people that, you know, or companies, they want to get involved, they want to do a better job. What are some of the low hanging fruit that, that you suggest as you've been on this journey? Well, I think about, well, organizations like this and conferences like this are very important, and I would say it's a very important tool that companies can use to actually begin to develop the mindset that they need to start to shift gears. Uh, also, organizations should begin to think about their systems. Uh, it turns out that there are biases in certain systems in terms of performance ratings, how people are promoted, uh, how people are rewarded, and you know, there is a look of leadership, unfortunately, uh, that is, is based on history. Right. And so, I think companies can start to really examine their processes, their views of their leadership model, their ways that they promote people because it turns out that great talent and leadership comes in all kinds of packages. Right. Yeah. And it's tough to fight. I mean, one of the keynote speakers this morning talked about they've actually published their unbiased, uh, or their unconscious bias class online for anyone to take. I yeah. can't remember if it was Schwab or, or Intel, which is pretty interesting, because we all have bias. We so do. It's, it's not about not having bias, it's about being aware of your bias and really trying to overcompensate for when you know, it's doing things that you aren't necessarily keeping track of. And it turns out that it's one of these things that, and I talk about this a lot, it turns out that if you step out into this world in places in which you're not comfortable leading people and engaging with people that you may initially not be comfortable with, what happens over time is you wind up developing a skill set. You know, whether it's leading women, whether it's leading people of color, or whether it's engaging with people with disabilities. Once you do it and you find out it doesn't kill you, right, it right. turns out that by definition it makes you a better leader. So we have these biases, right. we do, we're human. Right. But it turns out when you explore beyond your comfort zone, to use a cliche, uh, 
you grow as a person, you grow as a leader. It's such a great point, right? Because birds of a feather is always the easiest path, it's right? It's easy. It's so easy. Yes. And, it, it, and it's just familiar. Whether that familiar is because that's a person that did it for you yesterday, mm -hmm. or they're the same race, background, color, they look the same, but it's so easy to go birds of a feather. But to your point, I think that's a great point that doesn't come up enough. It's when you challenge yourself with something new that you get back on a little steep learning curve, and that's when you grow, and that's when you, you know, you feel so much better when you do, you know, get a little, uh, a little growth in your personal development. Absolutely, and it turns out that that in and of itself is a skill. Once you do it a few times and you find out that you're capable of doing it, you're looking for that next thing that's sort of outside of the lines that you're used to be comfortable with, and you grow. That's great. So I wonder if you got to have an analogy for jazz. I know you're a jazz fan, doing a little homework before you came on. This is, you know, the great uh, the musical that just won all the Academy Awards talked about kind of the, the, the jazz group and there's a little bit of conflict and, and harmony, but at the end of the day, they make beautiful music together. Do you see some of that kind of analogy in, I, in, in what you're trying to accomplish? I actually do. I think that once you begin to master your instrument, I, I, I talk about job descriptions and systems as sort of the sheet music, you know, the basic tune that you have. But once you really master your instrument, you can take it in all kinds of places. I mean, Mary Had a Little Lamb, played by uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, is very different than, you know, the basic music, right? And I would say that as we think about ourselves as leaders, you know, they're the basic things that we have, our technical education, our personalities, but once you really master that and you lose your fear of stepping out there, you can improvise all day long with all kinds of people in all kinds of ways and all kinds of systems. I believe that to be true. Well, and you're doing it every day. Yes, right. All right, Greg, well, I was going to say, do you have the last word, but I don't know that we could do much better than the jazz analogy, so I think we'll leave it right there. There you go, let's stop right there. Let's <laughs> stop right, right there. Well, right. hey, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day and, and look forward to um, you know continued success in your journey. Thank you so much, Jeff. Very right. nice to meet you. Pleasure. Absolutely. All right, he's Greg Jones. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching.